Mental health illness is said to be one of the growing concerns here in the country, which is why an organization has long been pushing for the passage of the Mental Health Act. Philippine Psychiatric Association President Edgardo Juan Tolentino Jr. will tell us more. Good morning, Doc Ed, and welcome to Daybreak. Good morning. Hi. Yes. Uh, first, I'm really curious. When is the mind considered no longer healthy? Okay. Uh, they always say there's a thin line between normality and uh, abnormality. Mm -hmm. And usually, as a rule of thumb, the thin line is crossed once functionality is affected, mm -hmm. okay? uh, severity threshold is uh, crossed, and uh, people actually uh, resort to more pathological things to be able to usually uh, intervene to function normally. To function normally. I see. Yes. So it's possible that one may already have some form of mental disorder and yet not know that's right. that it so, exists. That's right. I see, I see. But in the Philippines, Doc Ed, what is the state of our mental health here in the Philippines? Okay, we may have to go by uh, scant statistics. And uh, for now, what we have, for example, was a uh, uh, few years ago, there was a study by the Department of Health's uh, National Epidemiologic Center. Mm -hmm. And they found out that 32% of uh, government employees who were subjected to the um, study mm -hmm. or the, to the tool uh, using the CIDI, this is a WHO uh, tool for diagnosing mm -hmm. uh, mental problems. And uh, they found out 32% actually had mental health problems. Really? And, and what so, were the top three? The top three were the first would have uh, was phobias or anxiety. So we're very anxious uh, people. Natetans. Diba usually we used yes. the word natetans. Ano Correct. na pala yun? It's already a disorder. No, of no. Some sort? Natetans oh. is not a disorder. But uh, when, it is when it really becomes... when severity is, ah, uh, is breached and functionality is affected, that th therefore it becomes an illness. Yes. Second and interesting is uh, alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. Now, this has been borne out by also some international uh, uh, data mm -hmm. that shows we are number three uh, in the world. Uh, for interesting alcohol for alcohol abuse okay. and interestingly first two are cold countries um, uh, Russia and Korea mm -hmm. and then there's us mm -hmm. and then the the third mental health problem is uh, expectedly depression which is uh, similar to uh, world data mm -hmm. so doc Ed that's a that was collated from government employees can we say that it possibly could also reflect the entire Philippines or the uh, most Filipinos? I think that's a very good question, but unfortunately, the truth is uh, around the world, uh, we or around the Philippines, we cannot extrapolate the data because that was that study was just done in uh, Metro Manila. Mm -mm. There was an attempt to to do a nationwide mm -mm. Uh, survey using similar tools. Mm -mm. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, methodology the numbers were not mm. big enough. I so see. it's very difficult to extrapolate that data. Mm -hmm. However, if, if we look at that data, um, mm -hmm. it also showed that uh, pretty much 32% uh, from that data set uh, actually also had mental health problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, on top of that, uh, we can actually look at the trending mm -hmm. in terms of suicide. And uh, the last data was, uh, they, they compared the 80s data and earlier to uh, the more recent data. And very interestingly, among 13 to 15 year olds, 16% have at least thought of suicide uh, in their lifetime. And about 16% uh, actually have attempted suicide. Uh, there has been a 17 fold increase over those years. So in fact, it seems that you know, uh, mental health problem, especially as serious as uh, suicide or suicidal attempt, mm -hmm. has actually been increasing. Mm. So with that data, can we safely say that it's possible that depression may be um, something that many Filipinos are having right now? What, what are the causes for this one, Doc Ed? I understand that la just last week, yes. you had this second Healthy Mind Summit. What was the output of that summit? What were the new things that you, uh, that you were able to unearth? Okay, 
The Second Healthy Mind Summit mm -hmm. actually attempted at gathering all the major stakeholders, whether they be from the professional groups, uh, Philippine Psychiatric Association, the uh, academe, uh, all the uh, institutions, mm -hmm. uh, health institutions, uh, the major ones. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we asked legislators to be there. Media was there, uh, especially patient groups as well as their care carers mm -mm. were also in the group. NGOs, the WHO was there, represented. So uh, we came together mm -hmm. to actually look into the major mental health problems. Mm -mm. And actually, uh, during the, the actual summit, yes. we, uh, we came up with a draft mm -hmm. that we presented to Senator Pia Cayetano. Mm, okay. uh, we hope that... That's the Mental Health Act or the Mental the draft. Health Bill. The draft. Yes, the draft bill uh, mm -hmm. for, for, the, for mental health. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's safe to say that, you know, uh, for the past 17 years, there have been attempts at coming up with different versions of the Mental Health Act. Mm -hmm. uh, sadly, to this day, we're only one of 25% of the world's population without a Mental Health Act. Mm -hmm. There are very few left, and in our region, we're mm -hmm. probably uh, one of the remaining uh, countries without a Mental Health Act. What, what's, what are the significant points of this particular act? Well, first, it embodies the right of the mentally ill. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, whether we talk about the Philippine Constitution or the WHO, uh, we, there is enshrined the importance of giving health a priority. So mm -hmm. health is the right of mm -hmm. all people. Mm -hmm. And when we talk of health, we are not just talking about physical health, mm -hmm. we're talking also of mental health mm -hmm. as well as uh, social health, right? So it is important that we see health in its totality. Unfortunately, the reality is everyone focuses on physical health and forgets that uh, without mental health, you will not really be physically mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. so, um, so this bill, the will. bill embodies, you know, uh, giving importance to those who are excluded, who are the those who are mentally ill. Mm -hmm. It actually proposes a body, uh, in this case, the Philippine Council for Mental Health, which will finally take mm -hmm. charge of the country's mental health mm -hmm. in connection with the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. Three, it comes up with uh, mental health services and programs. Mm -hmm. So it's not just for those who are mentally ill, but for the rest of the population, probably the 99%, who uh, may have at one time or another have some uh, mental health problem mm -hmm. uh, as so distinguished from illness. I see. Okay. Uh, so with, with this one, Doc Ed, those who may have experienced this, we will now have access to, for example, the treatment easily. Because I understand that currently some hospitals, not all hospitals would have a psychiatric ward or That's would right. have beds, particularly for those who may be suffering um, some form of an illness or a disorder. That's true. Okay. Perhaps in the na national capital mm -hmm. region, uh, mental health services would be readily available. Mm -hmm. But if you go beyond, there are some provinces mm -hmm. without even a psychiatrist. So with this act, it would help provide for that? It will certainly uh, give priority mm -hmm. to mental health or at least mm -hmm. uh, allow mental health to be at par, mm -hmm. so have some parity with physical health. Mm -hmm. So it'll be given uh, enough importance, equal importance, equal importance mm -hmm. as physical health. The right. WHO recently cited that we do lack mental health systems, especially during emergencies or catastrophes, which we always have here in the Philippines. That's right. What would that mean, Doc Ed, considering that we've always had all these uh, problems with uh, different type food, different um, calamities, and of course, uh, the economic issues that we're That's all right. facing. Based on your clinical observations, and maybe if there's a research by the by your association, how would it? What would it be like for us now? Probably Filipinos. Well, if if we are able to uh, have a mental health act and mm -mm. it becomes integrated, even in emergencies, particularly mm -hmm. uh, disaster preparedness, 
uh, we have actually been uh, working with other groups and we will not take full credit. Mm -hmm. We work with other groups mm -hmm. uh, depending on what is needed at the moment. That's, uh, we, we define our entry points. Mm -hmm. So being psychiatrists or specialists, generally we, we first help educate, for example, mm -hmm. in uh, psycho psychological first aid. Mm -hmm. Then uh, right now, even if there are no major disasters, we are in the regions and se several provinces training mm -hmm. uh, not psychiatrists, ah. but the grassroots uh, health mm -hmm. doctors and nurses. Ah, so they can handle also uh, I mental don't know, health think, problems, right? Like com they, common mental health problems would that's be right. what Doc Ed. That's right. So oh. uh, the disasters became our mm -hmm. entry point into the uh, disaster response uh, I see. of the Philippines. Right? Okay, so we're looking forward. Hopefully, finally, it will be passed, this Mental Health Act. We hope and so. And do give us uh, updates uh, from every now and then on how that is faring so far. We shall. Thank you so we much. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Again, we've just spoken with the president of the Philippine Psychiatric Association, Dr. Ed Tolentino, Jr.